Hey guys, it's Sarah. <laughs> yes, I have a book haul. I feel like I say this constantly and I don't know what happened. <sighs> I do. I bought books. Um, I have a few that were sent to me. I actually have some 2023 arcs coming in already, which is awesome. So I'll show you those. But I did. I bought books, guys. It's fine. Um, from different places. <laughs> I'm not even going to say like, I should not be buying books. Blah, blah, blah. We all know this, but I do it anyway. So saying it doesn't make any difference. It is what it is. I bought them. I'm owning it. All right, let's talk about it. Okay, so we are going to start with books that were sent from publishers. This first one was sent from Harper Perennial, and that is How to Survive Everything. This is by Ewan Morrison. This was actually released in the UK last year, and it just came out in the US in November. So this is available now. And this is a story about a family who have a father that is kind of a doomsday prepper, basically. <laughs> and he is convinced that there is this pandemic coming, or maybe a pandemic actually is coming. I'm not quite sure um, how far into that it goes. But he wants to save his family from people. And he wants to go off the grid. He wants to, you know, just live by nobody and live off whatever they can. So he that's what he wants to do because he doesn't want to be in a situation where he's around people when a pandemic hits. So the mother of this family is like, you're crazy, not happening. Um, so he decides to kidnap his two children and take them to a place where he has already prepped. He already had like a prepper area um, where he started making preparations. And so he steals his kids and takes them there. They are completely off the grid. No one knows where they are. And these kids are terrified because they have no idea <laughs> what's going on, where their mother is, why, why they're here. Um, if the world's not going to be safe, why is their mother left behind? Like all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah. And they're living with this man who is a prepper and completely conspiracy theories, all that kind of stuff. So that must be a very scary situation for them as well. Um, but yeah, so this came out on November 15th. So it is out now. Thank you very much, Harper, for this. I appreciate it. And yeah. Okay, this next one was sent to me um, by Penguin. And this is actually a companion book to another book that he wrote. Um, and this for kids, it's for ages eight to 12. And this is called Deadly Hearts. This is by Michael Bergen. And this is History's Most Dangerous People. So he wrote another one that uh, was called Dark Hearts. And so this is like, just another another thing to add to that. Um, so this can definitely be read as a standalone. You don't have to read them in order or anything, but it's just like another little volume. This is a really cute printed hardcover. I love it. The cover is stunning. Very, very beautiful. So like I said, this is for kids. This is a nonfiction and this highlights 16 people in our history who have been the most deadly people. So information about anyone from Vlad the Impaler to Adolf Hitler, just people who made a very, very big impact on their cruelty and the way that they treated people and stuff. And this is also illustrated. So I'm going to show you a couple of those as well. So I thought it'd be interesting to see how this type of subject is brought to children of this age, because, you know, this can be a, kind of a scary thing. <laughs> so I thought it'd be interesting to check it out and see what I think. Um, but we have some and papers with swords. <laughs> it's kind of cool. And uh, we do have illustrations in here. So I'll show you a couple of them. Oh, I can tell you actually who is highlighted in here as well. So we have Alexander the Great, Julius Caesar, Attila the Hun, um, Genghis Khan, um, Vlad the Impaler, Queen Mary, Ivan the Terrible. I'm kind of skipping over a couple people here, just kind of telling you a little bit. Adolf Hitler, um, King Leopold. So like, just that's interesting. Um, and you know, for kids, so the print is very big and it's a smaller book. Um, so let me see. Okay. So here's Alexander the Great. So they have illustrations in there of the actual people. Um, let me find, and it, it's going to give kids like the history of them and what they did and, you know, maybe how they rose to power or something like that. So, um, I'm going to see if I can find the Adolf Hitler one for you real quick. And yeah, so I thought it would be, okay, there's Adolf Hitler. 
right there. So um, yeah, I thought it would be interesting just to kind of see how this is. And these are very short. There's These were only like four or five pages for each person. So a very short little volume, but I thought um, something to take a look at and just to see how it's done. This comes out on December 27th. Okay, so now we're going to get into some books that are coming out in 2023, and I've gotten physical arcs of them. So this first one was sent to me from Harper Perennial, and that is The Girls Who Disappeared by Claire Douglas. This comes out January 10th, and this is a thriller book, and I have not read this author yet. She does have quite a few <laughs> books available, um, including one that came out actually earlier this year, and I got that one as well. Uh, so... Yeah, but this one follows a case that happened in England where there were four girls driving home late one night, the car crashes, and only one girl is found at the scene. The other girls are completely gone. And I think she either doesn't know what happened or maybe she was unconscious. I'm not quite sure um, how she doesn't know what happened to the other girls, but it became like a big phenomenon of what in the world happened to them because they were gone without a trace. So we fast forward 20 years and it's the anniversary of the tragedy. And we have a journalist who is kind of digging around to see um, if she can figure out what happened to these girls and figure it out. So that sounds really interesting, but it comes out in January. Okay, so this next one was sent to me from Atria, and this one comes out January 3rd, and that is Vamps, Fresh Blood by Nicole Arend. Um, this is 100% a vampire book. Um, <laughs> why did I accept a vampire book, you might ask? Because they're fun. I like them. And this one is set at an academy for vampires. However, our one of our main characters, Dylan is half human, half vampire, which makes him an outcast. And so he actually gets, um, I would say bullied, but when it's vampires, it's a whole nother level of bullying, right? Like even threatening lives. But um, something happens to where there's a target on his back now, not because of that. And so we're trying to figure all this out. But this is set at an academy in the Swiss Alps and vampires. And I'm interested. Why not? That sounds like a good time. It's nice and short. Um, it does come out in January. So we're going to see what this is all about. Okay, so this next one comes out in February. And this one sounded like so much fun. So this is called Bookworm by Robin Yateman. And <laughs> this one was sent to me from Harper Perennial. And this follows a woman. Her name is Victoria. She is unhappily married. <laughs> and um, she ends up just really finding solace in the books that she's reading. It just, they help her escape and take her away from her own reality, which is, you know, the reason a lot of people read. But hers is like serious. She needs it, right? So she ends up reading in a coffee shop and she looks over and there's this handsome stranger sitting near her and he's reading the same book that she's reading. So automatically she's like, is this my soulmate? Is this meant to be? Is this supposed to be a meet cute? Even though she's married. And uh, she ends up really kind of retreating into the books that she has read in the past and really kind of making those books a, re a reality in her brain. Um, to the point where something ends up happening and her reality and her um, imaginings start to blur and um, they have some consequences because she's, things are happening. <laughs> so I think that sounds really interesting. It sounds like a fun time. It, again, nice and short. So we're going to see what this is about too. Okay, so the next one was sent to me from Tor and I was very excited to get this. This is The Cradle of Ice. This is by James Rollins. This is book two of the Moonfall series. I have book one over there on my gifted cart because my friend Melinda gave me that book. <laughs> I haven't read it yet, but I got this from the publisher and I was like, oh, sweet. So I definitely need to make the first one a priority here soon so I can read this one too. This one again comes out in February. It is a huge one. Also, the first one is a huge one. So I'm not going to go into synopsis because I'm not going to read the synopsis of this one since I haven't read the first one yet, but it is a fantasy series and it's you know, unlikely people coming together to go on a mission and do some things to fight some things and peoples and stuffs and things. So yes, that was the worst description of a book ever. It's fine. Okay. This next one, I got an email from the publisher saying, um, your finished copy is on the way. And I was like, oh, okay. I don't remember requesting this, but all right, cool. Thanks. I'll take it. Um, that's the choice 
by Nora Roberts. This is book three in the Dragonheart Legacy. This one just came out. Um, I, d I just got it and I was like, oh, all right. So um, I do have the first two books that I like. I actually have them in hardcover, which is really nice. I found them pretty cheap, um, but I didn't have the th like the third one just came out. I was not expecting to get it at all. And I have not read the first two yet. So now I have a full trilogy, which I super appreciate um, from St. Martin's Press, but I don't I haven't read the first two yet. So obviously I can't get into this or even really want to read what it's about because I'm not sure. But I've heard amazing, amazing things about definitely the first one, which is called The Awakening. And then the second one is called The Becoming. And then this one is The Choice. So um, I would like to get to these. I definitely want to read Nora Roberts. I have not read anything by her ever. And she is very, very, very prolific and writes in different genres, which I really like. So um, we'll see. But I do have this trilogy. So this is probably where I'm going to end up starting when I do read her. But if you like Nora Roberts, and you like this, these books in particular, this one is out now. Okay, those are all from publishers. Thank you so much to all of them for the books. So generous. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so these next four I bought on a little shopping trip that I did with my friend Krista from Books and Jams. We were able to meet up one day and have lunch and we went shopping and it was a lot of fun. So I ended up getting four books at this really great used bookstore that we found. And the first one here is A Wish in the Dark by Christina Suntervat. Sunterbat, I think is how you say her name. Uh, I have not read anything by this author yet, but she has quite a bit to read from. And uh, Amanda from The Curly Reader really put this one on my radar. She was talking about it. And this is like a Les Mis inspired middle grade book. And I was like, yes, please. Um, so this is following a young boy and a young girl who have both grown up in a prison system, but for different reasons. And um, there's a prisoner escape and people on the run and trying to figure things out and like all, just all this kind of stuff. And it is set in kind of a Thailand inspired country. So uh, I don't know if it's fantasy or not, but I think, I think it might be. Um, but it's definitely like kind of revolutionary type stuff as well. And I was like, you have me at Les Mis. Got it. And it's middle grade. So I'm very excited to read this one. All right. Let's talk about buying book number two in a series that I haven't started yet. Why do I do that? It's fine. Storm of Locusts by Rebecca Roanhorse. Um, this is book number two in the Sixth World series. I do have book number one, which is called Trail of Lightning. I've just heard amazing things about them. However, I don't know if there's going to be a book three. We have like, I guess we haven't heard any news about that yet, but people are kind of anxiously awaiting because this one came out a while ago. Um, she is writing other things as well, but I don't know. I've heard really, really, really good things about it. And I think this is like a sci-fi more than anything. And um, it follows indigenous characters and it's supposed to be just like really, really good. Um, so I'm definitely interested for sure. And they're both kind of like tall and skinny. So, you know, nothing too crazy. So I probably need to just kind of jump on this and read the first two books and see what I think. But I can't even tell you what it's about because I do have the first one. I don't remember fully what it's about, but I've heard amazing things. And so I spend my money. Now let's talk. <laughs> okay, I got I got two books in a series by an author who I've never read from. But they're huge, chunky fantasies, and I'm really interested in reading his books. So books one and two were at the store, and they were super cheap. Like, fine. Joe Abercrombie. So I got Best Served Cold and The Heroes. So book one, book two. I did my research before I bought them, made sure they were one and two, and I wasn't buying like three and four. Um, I don't really know what this is about. I think they're mercenaries. Yeah, mercenaries, fantasy. I want to read him. I've heard amazing, amazing things about his works in particular. Um, just anything by him apparently is really good. I do have the first book. No, I have the whole First Law trilogy. I do. I have all three of them. And now I have these two. It's fine. All right. And now we're going to talk about books I just got randomly at random different places. So this one, you guys, I'm so excited. Um, okay. This one was initially self-published and then it got picked up by Tor. And then when they were announcing like the different editions for this book, 
the UK cover, I died. So Amanda from the Curly Reader, talk about her again, um, told me about this one. She was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to get this one because it is the cover so gorgeous. It looks like a chalkboard. Ah, oh. Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. You guys, look at this. It looks like a coffee shop chalkboard, which when you know what the book is about, makes a lot of sense, right? So this is a fantasy book. It follows, I believe, an orc who is done fighting wars. She just wants to retire. She wants to settle down. She doesn't want that life anymore. She wants to open up her own bakery and a coffee shop. And you guys, I can't. It's supposed to be completely cozy, completely just adorable and makes you feel good. It's a fantasy book. It's a low stakes fantasy book, which it that's what it says it is. And I just could not even pass up this cover. It's so beautiful. So I got this from Book Depository and it's hardcover. And then the original, um, the US cover is also on the inside here. So you can see that's what the original uh, US cover looks like. But I had to have this one. It is so pretty. I love it so much. And I can't wait to read it. From Pango Books, I got this YA novel called Turning. This is by Joy L. Smith. This is a ballerina, as you can tell, story. I, I want to read some ballerina stories. I have quite a few on my shelves already because I just... I don't know. I want to read about that. And I have quite a few, so I need to like read some before I buy any more. But this one caught my eye because of this cover. It's so beautiful. So this follows a young girl. Um, and she, I can't see her name on the back here. Um, Jenny. I think it's, it's either Jenny or Jeannie. I don't know. So maybe I'll see when I read it. Um, but she is a ballerina has big aspirations to be a professional dancer, but something takes her out and she is dealing with the implications of that and the um, hopelessness that she's feeling because of that, that her dreams are just completely turned upside down. And now she's trying to deal with it. And she's trying to see if she can get back, if she can get back there. Uh, and it's going to have a lot of like turmoil between her and another person and just like that kind of stuff. So I thought it sounded interesting and I got on Pango for a really good price. Okay, another one that I got on Pango is Extasia. This is by Claire Legrand. Claire Legrand is one of my favorite authors. I have five-starred everything I've read from her so far and I'm hoping this will be no exception. Um, but this one is kind of a witchy book or follows like a group of girls who are in charge of protecting these woods. And I think they kind of fall into the category of being witches and just kind of stuff like that. So this is a nice, big, chunky um, YA book, and I'm very excited to read it at some point. But yeah, I've been wanting this one for a while. Okay, a couple books I got from work. <laughs> I haven't bought that much from work. I've actually only gotten two books from work. Can you believe it? Like, I've been there almost a month and a half, and I've only used my discount twice. <gasps> I'm so proud of me. Okay, so this one I heard about on the Currently Reading podcast. And the second I heard about it, I think I was going to work that day, and I was like, I'm going to buy that book. <laughs> This sounds amazing. So this is The Mountain in the Sea by Ray Naylor. This is like a science fiction book. And it's definitely like a little bit of artificial intelligence. And there's this group of octopus, oct octopuses that... Okay, so these animals, octopuses in general, are extremely intelligent. They are so smart. But these are like off the radar smart to the point where they're contemplating world domination. <laughs> and I need it. I need it. And the girls on the Currently Reading podcast could not stop talking about it. Both of them just absolutely loved this book. And I was like, I need this book. And then when I went into work, I had never heard of it. I walked in and looked at it. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is stunning. Oh my gosh, this is stunning. Oh my gosh, this is stunning. I need this book in my life. And I bought it. Hopefully I like it because I 100% pulled it right off the new release <laughs> shelf and bought it. So I guess we'll see. Okay, and the next one that I got, I had been eyeing because I had seen it. Obviously, it was like on a feature table at work. So I'd seen it a bunch. I'd never heard of it before I walked into the store. And I just, the cover just is completely striking to me. And I always had been just kind of looking at it. And then it won the National Book Award. And I was like, okay, that was the push for me to actually go ahead and pick it up. Because I've been thinking about it anyway. And once it won the National Book Award, I was like, done. And that is The Rabbit Hutch. This is by Tess Gunty. Look at this cover, you guys. 
can you even, it is so beautiful. It just stands out so much. <laughs> and this one follows a town in Indiana who they were, it was a town that had a big automobile plant, but then that plant shut down, leaving a lot of people out of work. And a lot of those people lived in this one apartment complex. And then there is one apartment that um, has four teenagers living in it who have aged out of the adoption, you know, like social services system. So they're living on their own now. They're all living together um, and they all have, kind of have their own set of problems. And then one of them just completely uh, something big happens with them. And so you're kind of following that. And it's just kind of like how society and things around you can really impact your decisions. And um, yeah, I don't know, but it won the National Book Award. So it sounded interesting. So I went ahead and picked it up. Okay, last but not least, definitely not least, I picked this up on Black Friday because it went down to half off. Now I could not use my employee discount on top of that. So I did I was not able to use my employee discount on this one, but it was half off, which is more than my employee discount. So I was like, this is still like better than that. So I'm going to go ahead and take it while I can. And that is Fairy Tale by Stephen King. I finally got it. I have been wanting this since it came out in September. I've heard such great things about it. It's a fantasy book, like a portal fantasy book by him. And I just, I really, really want to read this one. And I've been kind of just waiting for the price to go down a little bit on it. And then it finally did for Black Friday at Barnes & Noble. So I got it for 50% off for a hardcover. And I'm very excited about it. Um, this follows a young boy who discovers that he can um, travel into a fairy tale-esque world. And his dog goes with him, I believe, as his companion. So um, that's all I know. I don't want to know anymore. I've been trying to avoid people talking a whole lot about this book because I just don't want anything to go into my head about it. I just want to go in blind and just know that it is a fantasy portal book. Um, and it's going to have some fairy tale kind of like themes running through it. So I'm really excited to see how he does this, but got that one. Okay, that's it. It's fine. It really is. It's fine. Um, so December should definitely be a lot smaller. I I might have a few, but really not that much. Plus, we're traveling in December. Um, I'm going home to Florida and I will not be buying books while I'm there. So like just kind of, you know, I'm going to work on working <laughs> instead of purchasing. Um, I do have one little shopping trip coming up in the very beginning of December, but I'm not planning to get a whole, whole lot, but I'll have a little bit. So we'll see how, we'll see how all this goes, but I'm going to try to keep it under control and yeah, that's it. So let me know your thoughts down below. Should I get to any of these sooner rather than later? And I will talk to you guys again soon. Hope you have a great day. Bye.